Let's talk about anime's biggest issue, perverts. Perverts are a huge problem that is way too prevalent in anime. I mean, literally almost every single anime has at least one creep that's either creeping on women or creeping on some children. It's a huge issue that needs to be addressed. And before you write that comment about how the culture is different or how the age of consent is lower, stop. You are part of the problem, and I'll tell you why in just a second. When it comes to perverts in anime, there's a lot to criticize. But I think the best place to start is with the characters. In general, there are three types of perverts that are present in anime. The first type is the annoying kind. These are the characters, usually protagonists, that are supposed to be comic relief, but mostly just come off as annoying. One of their main traits, if not their only trait, is that they are indeed very horny. This is where you find characters like Mineta, Zenitsu, and Leorio to an extent. Because this character archetype often comes off as annoying, their perverseness is not as bad as some of the other characters we're going to talk about. This is because their perverted ways adds to the reasons that they're not likable. Obviously, this doesn't mean their behavior is okay. Okay, as the way they behave around women is still inappropriate. Plus, you already know there's going to be someone somewhere on the internet defending their actions while believing that these actions are okay. These characters are an issue, but they're not as big of an issue as our next category of characters, which is cool perverts. Kind of an oxymoron, I know. This is where we find characters like Himeno and Hisoka. Both of these characters are literally pedos, and yes, Hisoka is a pedophile. Even if he's technically attracted to the boy's power, he's still attracted to them. You can't stare at kids in the way that he did and not be a pedo. Anyway, these kind of characters are a lot more problematic than the annoying kind. They usually garner fans who will defend their actions, and these cool creeps do a much better job of normalizing perverse behavior, because it's much easier to look up to and idolize these kinds of characters. I know that idolizing a character sounds dumb, but it happens a lot more than people realize. Like, people get so wrapped up in their favorite characters that they're willing to defend anything they do and twist their words or actions in the name of preserving their perception of the character. Hisoka stands are a great example of people who do this, as our Aaron stands for his actions, and Toji stands for his. To be honest, I don't entirely understand why characters are written like this. Like, if you're gonna make a character cool and lovable, why also give them an extremely questionable trait like this? I mean, in Hisoka's case, it's kind of obvious, but in Himeno's, I really just don't get it. Maybe it's supposed to show that good people can do bad things, or vice versa, but all it's really done is tarnish an otherwise good character. The third kind of character is creepy antagonists. These are the most fine, in my opinion. Not that their actions are okay or anything, but if an undesirable trait is given to an antagonist, it usually makes them more hateable, which makes them a better antagonist. However, this type of character can still be an issue depending on how far their perversion goes. For instance, I do think Berserk occasionally goes too far even if there is narrative purpose behind the assault. Another time I don't think perverted antagonists are really that okay okay is when every antagonist goes after the same person again and again. Because in this case, it's not the antagonist that's the problem, it's the manga writer. Normally, I don't like to take aim at manga writers when I criticize anime, but in this case, I feel like I have to. Because without manga writers writing perverted characters, they would never exist in the first place. So why do manga writers even write these perverts? Well, to be honest, I don't know. I can't see into the minds of these people. But we can take a few educated guesses as to why these characters characters get written. The first possible reason is that they like drawing these specific characters in general. There have been plenty of times where manga writers have talked about how they have favorite characters to draw. Maybe these are the characters that they enjoy drawing. And the last possible reason that we're going to discuss is that for some reason they think these perverts are integral to the story. This is the case for the second category of characters that I talked about. Sometimes authors just think they need these characters in this story for one reason or another. I don't know if I really understand this mentality because there are plenty of ways to make a character unfavorable without making them perverts. Look, I understand that every manga writer has a story to write, and that what they put into their story is 100% up to them, and that if I don't like it, I don't have to read it. But here's the thing, I do like it. Not the perverts. But the stories, the plot, the characters, all of it interests me. I mean, I have an anime YouTube channel, for God's sake. I don't make anime videos because I hate anime. I make them because it's one of my favorite mediums out there. But 
there is so much good anime out there that is plagued by tons of fan service or tons of unnecessary sexual abuse. And that can be traced back to the writers that put it in their stories. And obviously not all manga writers are to blame, a lot of them are fine, and a lot of the better stories don't have these issues because the authors are able to put aside their preferences for the sake of the story. There's still one kind of pervert relating to anime that we need to talk about. In fact, it is the most damaging and most important one. It's the fans. There are two kinds of fans that are a problem in this context. First, we have the ones that defend and minimize the actions of these perverted characters. These fans go hand in hand with the second category of character I mentioned earlier. They find some connection to a character that is a creep or pedo, and as such they want to see this character as not a bad person. Unfortunately, that's not really possible. I already talked about these characters earlier in the video, and since I don't want to waste your time, I'll just keep it short. Characters that are sexually abusive are not good people, and they never will be. Now let's move on to the other, much more important issue. It's the fans that are real life pedophiles. These kind of fans are by far the worst kind of perverts when it comes to anime, and it's not even close. Let's just talk about the optics of liking the same media as these people. There's a reason that anime stayed out of the mainstream through the 2000s. It's because there were really only two kinds of fans in the West. These kind that defended and embraced pedophilia, and the ones that didn't, but didn't want to be associated with that kind of fan, so they kept their interest in anime mostly to themselves. These kind of fans hurt anime as a whole, because they are often extremely vocal members of the community, and it skews how anime fans look to non-watchers. Oh yeah, and they're pedophiles. I don't think I need to go into why having a pedophile in a community is a bad thing, but in case I do, let's do a quick rundown. Pedophiles put younger watchers in direct danger. Their preferences are illegal and morally repugnant. A lot of the time, they also come with other issues that are either a result of their preference or a part of it. These people are also almost impossible to reason with and will most likely believe what they believe forever. And before you leave that comment about how the age of consent is different or how the characters you're into aren't actually 13, they're 3,000 years old in the body of a 13 year old, these are still not good. As I already mentioned, there is a morality issue here even if we look past the lawfulness of this crime. Scientifically, a child is much less mentally developed than an adult and that's the whole reason we have laws protecting them in the first place. Perverts of any kind are a major issue in any media. Their problems are only exemplified by the online communities that have long housed fans of anime. They are by far the biggest issue with the medium. I know I spent a lot of time in this video talking in terms of black and white. Either a character is a pervert or they're not. Either they're a decent person or they're not. While this might seem harsh, it is how these characters are. You cannot be a good person or a good character if you're violating someone else's sexual preferences. That's just how it is, and it is indeed that cut and dry. Yes, bad people can do good things, but that doesn't make them good people. In no world is Himeno a good person despite her good deeds. In no world is Ahsoka anywhere close to a good person. In no world is Mineta someone that should be a hero. I don't want to get too existential right now at the end of the video, so I'll just end it with this. Perverts are the biggest problem facing anime right now. There's not much we can do to fix this issue, or any issue relating to anime to be frank. But the more we talk about it, and the more we address these issues, the more we can create a safe space for all enjoyers of the media. If you made it this far into the video, please consider subscribing. It's the easiest way to gauge if people actually enjoy my content or not. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again next week for another video.